Hello, my name is Brooke Tyler Benson. I am the founder of Not Starving Artists, and today I want to walk you through Ally Banks website. Now, I normally don't do opinions on what banks I like and don't like. That's a lie. I do. But I want to be very clear that as I walk you through Ally, I am a personal user of this bank, and I absolutely love their features, and they've got some really cool things going on. So in addition to sharing all of that cool stuff with you, this is another example of how to look through and research a bank's website, a financial institution, or product's website to know what to look for. So because Ally is a bank, the two things we want to look for to start off before we do any deep diving is, is it FDIC insured? That's the insurance that protects you in case the bank goes under or gets bought, that you are entitled to that money up to $250,000 per account. FDIC insurance is a must. The second thing we're looking for is what kind of fees do they charge? Ideally, we want no fees. There are tons of options out there that don't have fees for you to bank with them. So we want to see what fees do they have, if any, and then we can start looking into the features and how this bank could work for your life. So first thing, we want to look for that FDIC insurance. So as you're scrolling through, normally it's you can see the FDIC um, label somewhere here, but if you can't, right here. Ally Bank is a member of FDIC, so you can see that there is no red flag here. They are a reputable banking institution. You can always normally find it in this bottom fine print area. So the second thing we want to look at is we want to look at those fees. So most of the time on the front page of any website, they're going to be promoting their best things, right? So right here, we can see they've got their yield, which we can look more into later. But the thing I want to talk about here is that they've eliminated their overdraft fees once and for all. Now, overdraft fees are one of those fees that we want to look out for. Overdraft fees, monthly maintenance fees, annual fees, ATM fees, lost card fees, all of these fees shouldn't be there. So we want to understand what their overdraft fees are, which they've eliminated them, which is amazing. But then we want to look for those other fees. So let's read about this. So I, I know they did a post on Instagram the other day that you can go and look at, but they uh, here are talking about how, um, what the situation is for why they eliminated them, what that means for you. But the reason they eliminated them is because it disproportionately affects people who are already financially struggling. Again, a lot of these fees and things like that disproportionately affect people who are already financial financially struggling. So it's really cool that a bank like Ally is like, yep, we're done with those because that's not what we stand for. All right. So back to the other fees. So let's go to their checking and savings. Um, we want to look at their online savings. So something I want to let you know about Ally is that they're an online only bank. They are online only, meaning they're not brick and mortar. They don't have a physical building, so they don't have to deal with the upkeep of that, like heating and cooling the buildings, building the buildings, staffing the buildings, right? So Ally, completely online, which will get to high yield in a moment. But because they're online, they can offer you some higher interest rates that other kinds of brick and mortar banks can't. So let's look at their online savings. One of my favorite things about Ally is that they allow you to set goals and bucket your money so that it makes more sense in our brains and our eyeballs to understand how our money is functioning. So let's click on fees. This is what we were looking for. Aha. So they don't charge things, fees for the things you use the most, right? Monthly maintenance fees, right? Online statements, all of that good stuff. What they do charge for, they're going to tell you right up front, this is the list we're looking for, return deposit item, overdraft item paid, or overdraft item returned, um, which this is the one that they are nixing, which is amazing. Then we've got excessive transaction fees, expedited delivery, outgoing domestic wires, and account research fee. So... I want to make you aware that excessive transaction fees, this is, let me see if I can 
get the whole thing in there. Yes. So when it comes to a savings account, you are only allowed to make, let's see if it says here. Yes. Six per statement cycle. You're only allowed to make six withdrawals from a savings account per statement cycle. Now that is universal. It's a federal law. So any savings account you have is going to have this limit on it. So all it's saying is that there's a $10 fee if you exceed that limit. That's a pretty standard one. Now, if you mess up one time, you can always call and say, this was my first time. I'm such a loyal customer. And they normally reimburse it. But I want you to know that if you really look, look at it with your savings account, most people are not withdrawing six times in a month from their savings account. But if that is something that you do all the time, maybe there is a bank out there that doesn't charge $10 for those six plus withdrawals. So those are our fees. They're looking good so far. So now let's move on to the high yield piece of this. So, oh yeah, there's the logo we were looking for earlier, FDIC insurance. That's the logo that you can see posted on a lot of uh, banks front pages because they want you to know they're FDIC insured. So we've got the high yield. Now, high yield means that they are offering you a higher interest rate for keeping your money there than other banks would, other brick and mortar banks. So as you can see, these are the brick and mortar banks they're comparing themselves to. Bank of America, Chase, and Wells Fargo. Now, these are some of the biggest offenders of fees. Now, I want you to also be aware that they're not comparing their se themselves to other online savings accounts. So no matter what, their interest rates are going to look much better than brick and mortar banks. But I encourage you to look at other online banks that also offer high yield savings accounts to see how Ally compares to them. So, all right, so here's the APY. So brick and mortar banks, right, they're at that 0.01% of yield. But Ally right now can offer 0.5% APY. Now, we don't want to be high yield chasing when it comes to online banks, whether it's 0.7 or 0.4%. Those are still worlds better than the 0.01% at brick and mortar banks. But at the end of the day, this APY is not beating inflation. It's just helping your money earn a little bit and not lose as much money to inflation as you would at one of these brick and mortar banks. So sometimes in non-pandemic times, this is being recorded in 2021, we are getting out of the pandemic right now. Interest rates are extremely low, which means that all of our APYs had plummeted from 1.2 to 1.5 to 0.4, 0.5, 0.6. When will they go back up? I'm not 100% sure, but right now they're hovering at about that 0.5%. Most online banks are hovering right here. It's not a bad APY. Again, much better than these brick and mortar. So again, we love the $0 fees. What I want to talk about now is this bucket feature. I'm not going to go too deep into surprise savings. Some people love that. Some people don't. It's when they round up a transaction and throw some into a savings account for you. That's fine. Um, but I want to talk about the bucket feature. So again, we're talking about the savings account. They also have a checking account, which we're not going to go too deep into. We'll look at some of their fees just to make sure it's... But what I want to discuss more deeper is this savings buckets piece. So buckets allow you to dedicate parts of your savings to whatever you want. So you open one savings account and then you are able to allocate certain chunks of money into certain goals. So as you can see, you can have a goal number and then you can title it. They have cute little pictures. It's, it's a lot of fun to do. Um, again, when we're making money fun, this is the kind of features that we're looking for. It allows our brains to make sense of it. It's fun. It's colorful. We're excited. Look how cute these pets look. We're excited to put our money money into the vet bills or pet emergency fund, sinking fund. So you can allocate, I think there it's up, yeah, up to 10 savings buckets. So you can have all of your different sinking funds, or you can have an emergency fund as well as your Hawaiian vacation fund or the new computer you need. And it helps our brain to make sense of things. You can also do sinking funds and split your money into different pockets at other online 
banks. But what you'll have to do with a lot of those other ones is open multiple savings accounts. But because there's not a lot of fees associated with savings accounts at online banks, it's easier to open multiple ones in order to have this bucket thing for our brain to see if they don't have the actual bucket feature. But this is one of the reasons I really love Ally because they've made it so easy for you. So that is the savings. Now I want us to find the checking account area. They also, if, if you like reoccurring transfers, they have roundups, surprise savings. See, there's some of those extra features that depending on your lifestyle and what you like that you might want to be looking for to be like, oh, that could be cool for me or I don't need that. I don't really use any of these, but you might. They might be real big like make or breaks for you. Um, let me see if we've got anything else about the checking doesn't seem like they have a lot about their, oh, we have, it's because we were looking at the online savings, that's right. So let's look at the interest checking. So what I want to make clear here is that their online checking account has a higher yield than a lot of other checking accounts. It's not great, it's still 0.1%. But if you have over $15,000, it does go up to 0.25%. Do you want to caution you? Having $15,000 in your checking account might not be the way to go, but it's your prerogative. Um, so let's look at the fees. Again, same kind of fees here uh, as the savings account. So make sure you look through those. There's nothing wonky that's popping up. Um, Let's look at here. So again, FDIC insured, um, no minimum balance. We love not having a minimum balance. The ATMs. So you have 43,000 plus all point ATMs that cost no fees. But the cool thing is that they also reimburse, I think it's up to $10 of ATM fees every single month. So if you can't find an all points and you need to get that money from your ATM, you can go and get the get your money out of the ATM, pay the fee, and then they'll reimburse it. Um, great, no monthly maintenance fees. We love that. So again, we're just looking for the red flags and we're looking to make sure that this checking account is going to work for you. So again, we want to go to the FAQs, right? We want to look at the, the nitty gritty. So can I deposit cash? You're not allowed to deposit cash. So for example, if if you deal in a lot of cash, like mostly cash, this bank may not work for you because you're not able to deposit it into this bank. But getting cash is, let's see where that is. You can get cash via the, the ATMs, of course, the ATM network. But I know you can also get cash, right? Like the cash back at the grocery store when you go. You can also get a cash advance at another bank through your debit card. So there's also a way to get larger chunks of cash and their customer service. I've worked with them as well. They're pretty standard. You know, they can help walk you through if you have some weird, funky things you're trying to navigate. Um, how can I access the money in my checking account? So you can see all of these FAQs. We love the FAQ section. So again, figuring out what do you need from a bank account? What do you need from a checking account? And what do you need from a savings account? And then does this fit what you are looking for? Um, so we want to go to the FAQ section. We want to make sure we're looking at the fee section. And then we also always want to go to the bottom and make sure we're looking at all of the fine print that there's nothing that's like, rah, rah, rah. So that is Ally Bank. Let me know if there is another bank that you'd like me to do a walkthrough of. If there are other features of Ally that you'd like me to walk you through, let me know in the comments. I want to give you all of this education. I want to arm you with the knowledge to go to any kind of bank or financial institution in their website and understand what to look for and where to look for it. Make sure you subscribe. I'll be doing many more of these. Catch you next time.